Good morning, friends, and welcome to this week's nursery tour. Today, we are going to be focusing really heavily on perennials. We have spent, of course, the last, what, gosh, couple of months really kind of hitting the annuals hot and heavy, and that's fantastic, and that is wonderful, and we still have tons of annuals available. But today, Jerry and I decided we would take a little switcheroo and focus on some perennials because just last week, this week, you saw me talk about the gorgeous load of perennials that our friends at Walters Gardens and Proven Winners sent us, and you loved it as much as I did. So we thought we would focus on the perennials, some of the perennials, not an exclusive list of perennials that we have to offer here at Creekside Nursery right this very second. So if you are coming to visit us today, tomorrow, this weekend, the coming weeks, you can expect to find these perennials here as supplies last. So that is what we're gonna really be focusing on. We're gonna be focusing on both shade and sun perennials. Remember, perennials are plants that come back year after year. Technically, I think the definition is a plant that lives for two or more years. Um, and so you can plant them and you're gonna get gorgeous structure and color for years to come. Perennials do require still some work, right? You have to maintain them, but they're typically not as fussy and high maintenance as your annuals. But when you plan your garden, um, thinking of four seasons of interest, you can have a stunning garden with really f heavily focused on perennials that are gonna give you color and structure and flowers all year round. So without further ado, let's get going. We are standing here obviously in front of the greenhouse. And if you come to the nursery and you, um, or you've been here or just on videos, you know that we have two easy scapes planted directly in front of the greenhouse. And then this is where we kind of have it set up with some of the plants to offer. It just makes it easy to shop. If you're not familiar with easy scapes, this is a great idea that our friends at Walters Gardens came up with. Basically, it's kind of a plant by numbers, right? So they give you um, these pairings of three to four plants that really go together. They have the same conditions, growing conditions, and you're gonna get a continuous set of blooms. So like for this one, we have, this is one that we partnered with them for pollinators, you have got the beautiful rock and grow salvias. Now the rock and grow is a series, not salvias, sedums, sorry. Um, so a lot of these, there is a lot of flexibility. So with like this, for example, is the rock and grow coral jade. Sedums, we love them because they are no fuss. They don't like to be fertilized. They don't want to be composted. They like it hot. They love the sun. They love it dry. So for example, this uh, coral jade, full sun, it's gonna be 16 to 18 inches tall, hardy in zones three to nine. Very, very adaptable. You're going to get, because this coral jade sat outside all winter long here at the nursery, so even this time of year, you've got beautiful structure to it, but this is going to be a late bloomer, right? You're gonna get this in late summer, early fall. Pollinators will love it. And of course, they come in all different colors. So the whole series of the rock and grow sedums, you've got some black ones, you've got, like you just saw me do, the midnight velvet. So those are sedums, and then, right, we love our early bloomers. So here's cat's pajamas. Y'all, we cannot keep this perennial in stock. We grow it, but we have also brought it in some from some of our fellow growers just a fantastic perennial that is an early bloomer nice and low beautiful blue flowers on it pollinators just go absolutely crazy for it ours here on the easy scapes has just kind of finished its bloom so when it's done blooming you gather it up and shear it back and then you'll get a reflush a nice short petite only 12 to 14 inches it is going definitely going to be a full sun one hardy in zones three to eight so nepeta cat's mint tends to be more deer rabbit resistant because it is part of that mint family and so it has a lovely fragrance to it but the pollinators just adore it nephophias uh red hot pokers right so right now you people will come and they think this is a grass it is not. It is an Ophophia red hot poker, um, part of the Pyromania series. So we are growing more. This is one of the last year's stocks. They do love it hot. So like this year's stocks is still growing, but we have some left over from last year. And then of course you cannot talk about perennials without talking about the summerific hibiscus. They are 
such amazing, wonderful performers. This easy escape is for deer resistant. Now, deer resistant, not deer proof, right? So people will, well, every time I say a plant is deer resistant, they go, well, the deer ate mine to the ground. Okay, so some plants are more deer resistant than others. Here we have, we start with the low and we're gonna work up our way to the high. The Paint, this, Paint the Town series of Dianthus, this particular one is fancy. And every time I see, say fancy, I can't help but hear Reba singing in my ear. Um, but fancy is a beautiful, nice, bright pink with a dark center. Your Dianthus are gonna be a semi-evergreen, especially for us. So even in the wintertime, you're gonna have a nice low um, carpet of this bluish green foliage. So you'll see something there all winter long early spring bloomer completely flushed out and gorgeous flowers and they do come in different colors so the beautiful thing again about the easy scapes as long as you get something a dianthus you can really use whatever which one you like these are going to be hardy in zones four to nine very adaptable and only six to eight inches tall so you've got that then one of the most popular plants, we again have a hard time keeping this one in stock. These are ones that we are growing. This is Serendipity Allium. And the Serendipity Allium is um, an onion, right? Alliums are onions. Gorgeous ornamental onion. You don't look at it and go, well, that's definitely an onion. And as long as you're not crushing the leaves, you don't smell that onion um, scent. But the Serendipity has a beautiful, nice, purple balls of flowers for us this is going to be a mid bloomer pollinators major attraction to them they love these plants then we come up to the summerifics the summerifics are perennial hibiscus so they will come back faithfully year after year this uh, particular one is evening rose and evening rose is the one that we have planted in the front here at the nursery these will get nice and big either your hibiscus are going to be more upright and narrow or they're going to be what we call a gumdrop so they're going to be wider and then they kind of come up 48 inches tall depending on the variety will depend on your mature size but they love it hot so these have come out are this this year's stock this is this year's stock that we were growing this one is, this is uh, French vanilla, and you can see the French vanilla is a little bit more advanced just because this was last year's stock, this year's stock. But they come in these beautiful pinks and creams and reds, big, huge dinner plate flowers. They love it wet. So if you've got a wet area that you really wanna have a big attraction to, the summerifics are going to be the way to go and they are full to part sun so you need a minimum of i would say five hours of direct sunlight to get those big huge massive blooms and then of course your grasses right grasses perennial grasses are wonderful this is niagara falls we brought these in from a, um, a fellow grower of ours the niagara falls is what i planted in the berm it'll be a four by four nice kind of a bluish green foliage to it um, Fantastic. Now, I also got a huge selection of phloxes. So you will see that we have some phloxes that are blooming, some phloxes that are not. Again, you have early, mid, and late bloomers within um, a plant family. The ones that are blooming, obviously, are gonna be those mid ones. This is the opening act series. More narrow leaf on it, but gorgeous flowers. So the two colors that we have are the ultra pink, which is the dark pink, and then pink a dot, which is back there in the back. A nice, almost a white, but it's not pure white because it has a nice uh, light pink hue to it. But the opening acts are super easy, y'all. They are, we have never had an issue with powdery mildew on them um, because they are early. They have those smaller leaves, so they're less likely to get the powdery mildew. With your phloxes, give them lots of room. These will get to be 22 to 28 inches tall. So they're about, I wouldn't say, I mean, they're about halfway, more than halfway to their mature size as height goes. And they're gonna be hardy in zones four to eight, definitely full sun. With your flocks, you want to give them full sun, let them dry out and give them some room. Now, down here, the ones that are not blooming, 
This is the Luminary series. Luminary series, this is a type of panicle phlox, meaning that they have, like you see, they have the bigger leaves on them, and then their blooms will remind you that same shape of a panicle hydrangea. Jerry is showing you opalescence right now, and opalescence is a very soft, creamy, white pink, reminds you of the pink dot. So nice light color on it. It is going to be 30 to 32 inches tall, delicious fragrance to it. Very much reminds me of a gardenia. Smells divine, hardy in zones three to eight. But if you want to make a huge, big pop of color, like a wowzers, then this is the ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is what I planted in the berm. And this will be a little bit taller, 32 to 36 inches tall. And you can see from the picture, like truly a neon purple. Makes a massive impact from a distance. Deep, glowing purple flowers on it. Again, still hardy in zones three to eight. With these panicles, Phloxes, the paniculatas, give them lots of room to grow. Give them because your, your base is going to get bigger. You don't get runners, um, but give them some room to grow and they will give you gorgeous flowers later on in the season. Uh, we're going to move on down here. We've got some different perennials spaced out in other areas, but I wanted to, we're going to come on down here. Now, if you are familiar, um, I have the drops of Jupiter. This is oregano. Who knew that onions and oregano could be so beautiful? But let me tell you, the drops of Jupiter is this beautiful chartreuse color. Um, a lot of you went crazy over the nepeta, the chartreuse on the loose. I don't have that yet. We're going to get it and be growing it. But in the meantime, this is going to be a great option for you. Drops of Jupiter oregano super easy to grow. I planted it late in the summer, like literally kind of like slapped it in the ground and said a prayer over it. And I was like, you're on your own. Gorgeous, big mounds of this chartreuse color. It's going to give you some purple flowers on it. 24 inches tall, nice mound on it. It does not send runners. The traditional oregano that we think of the culinary oregano can be a little invasive, right? So it spreads out. This is not going to do that. It is going to be hardy in zones four to nine beautiful, low maintenance, easy, easy plant that does take the full sun. You're going to love this. So you need to come get this while we have it. Another plant that I adore, right? We planted this in the berm. We planted raspberry. This is Monarda, right? Bee Balm. There's a couple of different uh, ones that we have here. We have the Upscale series. Upscale is going to be a little bit taller if I'm going to make sure. Mm, yes. So there's two series. We have the upscale and we have the leading lady. Upscale is going to be a little bit taller. So what Jerry is showing you right now is the pink chenille. Nice, really pretty, kind of a, a hotter pink. Um, and it is going to be 20 to 22 inches tall. Again, deer resistant because it is in that bee balm mint family, has a fragrance to it. It's just now starting to pop out. Your monarders are going to be hardy in zones four to eight. While they love the sun and they can handle the heat and the humidity, we have found that they need to have consistent moisture. If they have consistent moisture, they are going to be super, super happy. Another one of the upscales is the red velvet. So red velvet very much reminds me, it is not blooming yet, of the classic Jacob's Klein. Jacob's Klein is like the industry standard. Your grandmama probably grew it, but it would get really tall. It would flop over in the storms. Um, it would send out runners. So here you get a beautiful plant that's nice and contained, but gives you those same, all the characteristics that we love about Monarda, but the, it takes out the ones that we don't. And then the uh, next series that we have is that leading lady. So here we have the lavender taffeta, and then the one that I put in the berm is the raspberry. Just basically two different colors. Raspberry, of course, is that really nice, hot raspberry pink color. And then the lavender is a beautiful, nice purple. So it just depends on your color palette, what you're looking for in your garden as to which one you're going to put in the ground. They're both going to be roughly, um, the taffeta is gonna be a little bit taller than the raspberry. So you just wanna kind of gauge your garden 
Are you going to put it in the front? You're going to put it in the back? What are you going to do? Again, pairing the oregano with the Minarda. Gorgeous. Like, look at that. If you took that Drops of Jupiter and put it in front of that pink chenille, it would be stunning. You've got a beautiful height difference. You've got a color difference. You're going to have different bloom time on these guys. Like, I'm creating an easy scape right here before your very eyes, people. We have it all set up for you. Gorgeous. If you don't have a geranium, now these got watered and we had rain. If you don't have perennial geraniums in your garden, you really need to. These are, again, are such fun plants. This is New Hampshire, New Hampshire, however you want to say it, purple, hardy geranium. These are nice, low-growing perennial plants that bring beautiful color to your garden right now. My geraniums have been blooming for maybe two weeks now. And they're low, only 12 to 18 inches tall. You're going to spread them out about 15 inches, hardy in zones of four to eight. It's just all about layering, right? So in your garden, filling in all those nooks and crannies. And you're not going to do it all at one time, right? Remember, gardening is a process. It teaches you patience. So if you have little holes in your garden and you want to fill them in, then that's where the geraniums, the monardas, this beautiful nepeta that I have, right here this is a um, it's not a new it's new for us but it is not by any means new to the gardening world this is marvelette blue and i actually found this plant when i was reading one of my gardening magazines i get two people ask me what i do fine gardening and um, garden gate so there was an article on pollinators and they said you cannot go wrong with this plant like you have to have this plant in your garden if you're looking to attract pollinators it is a nepeta obviously it's going to be a lot taller than the um, cat's pajamas this one is going to be um, as far as like 10 to 12 inches tall and about 12 inches wide much more open airy habit on it hardy in zones five to nine this is what we call a non-branded plant right so you should be able to find this like if some people always say i can't get proven winners well this is not a proven winners um, but it is a fantastic beautiful plant to add to your garden if you want to go with white this is a great one and actually they have discontinued this plant for i don't know why but i love this plant this is another nepeta this is lesser cat mint i really don't like the name because it is not a lesser cat mint it reminds me very much of marvelette blue um, i'll let jerry get the tag for you but the flowers are white so you could easily mix these together. I have this all throughout the sun, sun gardens at the patio. Um, beautiful, pure white blooms on it. It is amazing. And we only have a few of them left. And um, so you're gonna wanna get those. This is more of the phloxes so that we have already talked about. So let's go over here. Shasta daisies. Shasta daisies are just an amazing plant that right now are getting ready to bloom. I think my mamas are already blooming. Mine has buds on it, it's gonna pop up. Proven Winners, they have the line called the Amazing Daisies. And there's several different bloom types within that series. We planted at the berm, we have both the Daisy May and the Spun Silk. So Daisy May is going to be your classic shasta daisy bloom right but it's going to be huge they are huge pure white flowers on it they get nice and big these are going to be your sun plants they are hardy i'm reading the tag upside down they're going to be you're going to space them about 10 inches apart they're going to get to be 12 to 24 inches tall and they are hardy in zones five to nine with my daisies, I have found huh, from Jenny's mistakes, they don't like to have super wet feet. Yes, they like moisture, but they do not like to stay in wet. So you're gonna want to make sure they're in a very well-draining um, part of your garden. Your mounds get massive, y'all. And especially if you can plant them in some multiples. And when I say multiples, I mean like two or three together. And when you space them apart, this is what we talk about, right? So here we go, 10 inches apart, that's roughly 10 inches and then you do that right there in a triangle now in the beginning it may look a little odd right you're like i have a triangle but within the first year of growing they just get massive and they grow as one huge clump all together sorry about that little interruption we have a rogue cement truck coming down here we're not getting cement but he was coming anyway 
So you have that, then you've got banana cream. We're just gonna run through these different varieties that we have right quick. The banana cream will have, start out a creamy yellow and then mature to a white. So truly on the plant, it look, you have a variation, an ombre of colors of creamy yellow and white, very much like a banana cream pie. We have marshmallow. If you want a nice, big, fluffy, fat bloom, then marshmallow is gonna be the one for you. Pure white, but really full and fluffy and just absolutely gorgeous. And then we do have spun silk somewhere in here. Spun silk has more of a shredded petals on it. Super fun. Now, sorry y'all, the, the truck's distracting us. We're hoping that he doesn't take out our gate. He's He's having a hard time, bless his heart, this morning. Um, if you have hot sun and you have dry areas and you're like, I just do not know what to do with this space. It is hot, it is dry, I can't get to it, help. Okay, Russian sage. This is denim and lace. Russian sage pairs beautifully with those sedums. They make perfect companion plants going to be a late season bloomer. It is more deer resistant because it is a sage, right? So it has that nice herby scent to it. Full sun. This is going to be 28 to 32 inches tall, hardy in zones four to nine. Gorgeous light blue flowers on it. Very upright. It's gonna be just super easy. In fact, nope, yep, nope. I can't tell if it had a bud on it or not. But we have the Russian sage. Talk about a ton of people with the Coreopsis, the uptick Coreopsis. I have a lot of folks who come and they're like, I need a perennial that's gonna bloom all summer. That can be the downside about perennials, right? Because they only bloom for maybe a month, six weeks. The Coreopsis, this is the uptick um, gold and bronze. This is one of those few perennials that will bloom continuously throughout the summer. Once it starts blooming, it just keeps going nonstop. Nice and petite, it is not super tall. I would say somewhere between that 12 to 18 inches tall. Your mound gets bigger. It is hardy in zones five to nine. It does love the sun. Um, so this is great. I put have told people like with mailboxes, right? They have somewhere around their mailbox. They would put a perennial that blooms. This uptick is going to be a gorgeous one. Penstemon, this is Midnight Masquerade. Midnight Masquerade is one of my top favorite perennials for the South because it is just a beautiful plant. Nice, gorgeous, upright flowers. It is blooming right now. This is the time of the year where it is blooming, 36 to 40 inches tall. Definitely a full sun because when you get the full sun, then you get that nice deep purple um, coloration on the plant. It is hardy in zones three to eight. Another great perennial attractor. When it finishes blooming, you can gather it up and just shear it back. And then you'll have your beautiful foliage for the rest of the season. The Amsonia, of course, we have had the Amsonia. This is storm cloud, nice bigger leaves on it. It has passed its bloom period. It's gonna be an early, early bloomer. Nice blue flowers on it. Then you have beautiful structure for the rest of the season. Peonies, people were asking if we have peonies. We still have gorgeous peonies for sure. We've got more sedums. This is um, Nightlight. This is from Walter's Gardens. Again, it is a non-branded, but you can see, right, nice structure on it, nice blue, fantastic plant for sure. Um, and then your pink diamonds dicentra. Now this is the pink diamonds that I did a little test on earlier in the season where I planted it in various sun locations around the forest pansy. It is doing great. It says that it can take more sun than what we typically think of, of a dicentra, a bleeding heart still does your classic little flowers very kind of a fern like just a different foliage on it this is going to be hardy in zones three to nine 12 to 16 inches tall gorgeous color um let's see let's move on over to the shade garden because we certainly have covered um a good number of our sun perennials the salvias a lot of people are asking about the salvias this is actually on it's a little bit of the second flush we had a beautiful first flush. Then when you cut it back, you will get another flush on it. Not quite as strong as the first go around, but this is the Indiglo Girl doing quite well. Um, oh, 
before we go, because I need to, before we go to the shade, I always get a little distracted here. All right, echinaceas. There are four new introductions of echinaceas in the Proven Winners line this year. Y'all are grabbing them up like crazy. Echinaceas, full sun, beautiful flowers. So we've got the fuchsia is bright, one in a melon, um, which is a beautiful, nice, big, huge cantaloupe colored flower on it. I would say the one in a melon and the raspberry beret, which is Jerry's what's showing you right now. It's, it's a double hot pink. Those have been the two probably most popular this year. Not that Back to the Fuchsia is not wonderful and not that Butter Pecan is not wonderful. They are. Um, but just know that we have the four new Echinaceas from Proven Winners. They are great. And then the other Echinaceas that we absolutely love, these again, non-branded, so you should be able to find them more readily if Proven Winners is hard for you to find. This is the Sombrero series. The Sombrero series comes in a nice wide range of colors. This one is salsa red. Gorgeous, very vibrant colors to it. And there will be some different heights to it, right? So you can see the Granada Gold compared to the red. You have a little bit of color, I mean, um, size difference there. It comes in bright yellow, it comes in orange, just an assortment of them. Now, if you have been with uh, <laughs> if you have been with gardening with Creekside for any length of time, you know that I struggle with lavender. I was ready to give it up, throw it away, say never again because I've killed it probably five or six times. Kata, our precious friend at Walters Garden, said, "Jenny, try one more lavender before you throw in the towel." And I was like, "Okay, fine." This is phenomenal, and phenomenal is phenomenal, y'all. I cannot tell you how amazing this lavender is for our southern climate. I have planted them right off of the patio. They are not on irrigation. Hot, hot sun. And y'all, they are getting ready to bloom. I planted mine last year about this size, a one gallon, and I am not exaggerating. My clumps are this big. I've not fertilized them. I have not cut them back. I literally put them in the ground, got them watered, right? But in the beginning, you got to water them, left them alone. They are stunning. I cannot wait. When they are in full bloom, I will show you. But if you struggle with lavender, you need Phenomenal. It is widely available. So go find Phenomenal, ask for it in your local garden center. Um, again, you should be able to get it much more readily than other perennial uh, like branded containers. Now, let's just pause for a moment and I'm going to show you. This is Laura's bed. Um, <laughs> those of you, uh, I, I dubbed it Laura's bed because we initially planted it for Laura of Garden Answer. This is when she was pregnant with Samantha Grace. Um, and so they were asking some, some other people to help them with some videos. And so we planted this bed with the shrubs and then my mom and I came back the next year and planted perennials. So just as a general pan, right? We start over here. I'm going to show you the things that are blooming. That is one of those opening act phloxes. Opening act, beautiful. I don't remember the exact color on that, but you can just opening acts, right? Then we have some hydrangeas. Look at this Minarda. Gorgeous. This is part of the Leading Ladies series. This is, uh, I don't know if this is raspberry or not. I, it is raspberry. So nice, massive clumps, huge clumps. Then look at these beautiful beasts. This is the Scentlandia. This is the Sweet Spire. Gorgeous. I love this. Um, and then we're coming back into some more Minarda. You can see how it is spreading. This again is been in here. This will be the third third year, fourth year that it's in here. So we had the Scentlandias coming down through here, more of the opening acts. We've got hibiscus, but the opening act, phloxes and the minardas are what are showing out right now. I've got um, Shasta daisies that are back here. Um, so this is a Shasta daisy, right? So we've got Shasta daisies. We've got the summerific hibiscus. The azaleas were beautiful. I've got Baptisia back there. Anyway, people ask about how Lars Bed's doing. Lars Bed is doing just great. Well, it was when she was pregnant with Samantha Grace. So Samantha is two. So it would have been 
three, I'll link it. I don't remember the exact, but I don't remember she was pregnant with Samantha Grace. So, and then the next spring, mom and I came back through and planted all the perennials because these were new introductions that Proven Winners was giving us. All right, we're gonna tiptoe through, not the tulips, we're tiptoeing through the rock bed and coming on over to the, um, the pines. Now, I dare say that I shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So a lot of times when we do nursery tours, Jerry's like, okay, we have, a lot, we have a good number of this, let's talk about this. We don't have any of that, let's not talk about that. But I have to talk about this, y'all. This is Little Red Head Spigilla, Spigilia, whatever you wanna say it. It is a native plant. Obviously, it is blooming right now, and it is stunning. We had some um, that we were growing. I think we have currently sold out. I have ordered more, so we're gonna grow more. This is a hard plant to grow. It has a, relatively compared to other perennials, it has a high rate of not succeeding and doing super well. But once you get it established, and this is for us as a grower, but once you get it established, it is a beautiful plant. Gorgeous. Will give you beautiful red flowers that the hummingbirds absolutely love and adore. So I just wanted to show it to you. And then those folks that are coming to the nursery, just know because you're going to see it. I don't have it available right now. We are growing it. Kata is sending us more. And we are going to have more available for you as soon as we possibly can. All right, so not that this is a perennial, but I just have to show this to you. Oh my gosh, y'all, look at these hydrangeas. This is Tough Stuff Aha, and they are blooming and stunning. Now, this is going to be a lace cap hydrangea. It is going to be pH dependent, meaning the color will depend on your soil pH. For us, here where we are, we're more acidic. So this is gonna be about the, the correct color for it. Laura, however, she does not have acidic soil. She has the exact opposite. Hers are always pink. So just depends on where you are and your soil pH level, that will depend your color. But the AHA is gonna be a little bit, um, it's kind of like the improved version of Tough Stuff, a little bit more um, prolific in the blooms. It reblooms better. For us, you can do morning sun, but absolute afternoon shade. It does not do well in the hot, hot afternoon sun. It is gonna be hardy in zones five to nine and only two to three feet tall and wide. Just a great, great performer of a hydrangea, especially for my folks who have more shade. Obviously, the little pollinators love it, uh, as you can see right there with that bumblebee coming up and um, just loves Love it, it is a great one. Um, let's see, where shall we go? One more, I know there's technically shrubs and I fully understand that, but I just wanted to show these to you. Another great one, these are the Let's Dance Sky View. And while they're gonna be more shade, right, they have the traditional mop head and not the lace cap. Again, but look at this, look at the color variation in that. I love that. So that's the sky view. And then next door, <laughs> I say next door, Jerry has the rhythmic blue. Much more intense, solid color, whereas the sky view is going to be more, um, has a creamy white center. They're going to be hardy in zones of four to nine and still relatively in that two to three foot um, size of a shape. We just got in some beautiful spreading yews. These are great evergreen for your shade, part sun, garden. Just a fantastic, beautiful plants on these that look, um, give some nice structure. Very kind of an open as far as like the leaves are not very big, very thread-like, gorgeous color on them, nice shape, beautiful evergreen. These can do probably four to five hours of sun, and then they do great in dappled sun. Really nice, attractive plants. One more thing. Well, not say one more thing. That's a big lie I tell myself. I say one more thing, and then we, you know, 20 items later, here we are still talking. Um, a lot of you were asking for, and it was hard for us to get, we have the Florida Sunshines. These are a shade-loving shrub that are evergreen. 
You can see they've been trimmed back a little bit and they have flushed out with brand new, beautiful growth. That is a great way to keep them nice and compact. You can see here, let me show you, right? So that is where it was trimmed, right? It was cut here, but then look, look at all this beautiful new growth on that. That'll keep them more compact and not so leggy. I probably need to do that to mine in the garden. But these are a part, a type of anise. So if you break it open, it has that licorice smell to it, which means it makes it a little bit more deer resistant, rabbit resistant, beautiful evergreen color for your shade garden. Massive, beautiful, gorgeous plants. And then hostas. My gosh, we've got hostas galore. Basically, you tell me what height you want, what color you want, we have hostas for you. And we have um, just a whole assortment of them. This is not all of them by any means. My folks who want, who have shade, who want some evergreen color in your garden, this is Feather Falls. Feather Falls is a grass and it is a beautiful grass. You don't have to prune it. In fact, please don't prune it. We had some um, of our precious people last fall give them flat tops because they knew that that's what you do for grasses not these guys <laughs> they didn't look so good um, so the feather falls is a variegated sedge it is definitely going to be more on the shade side can do up to four hours of sun but it is going to be as far as your height 14 to 18, 18 inches tall but wide it gets really big breadth to it, it can get to three to four feet that might be more in Michigan than here in North Carolina, but it does get a nice big size to it. Hardy in zones five to nine. Again, shade perennial grass that is an evergreen. Feather Falls is just a fantastic one. I love this plant. It is a gorgeous one. So just know that really whatever it is that you're looking for, um, whether you have sun or where you have shade, if you have deer pressure, rabbit pressure, you're looking for your pollinators, plants to attract you know, your pollinators. Pollen, uh, the perennials are definitely gonna be a great option for you. And so you can check those out. Go to your local garden center, talk to them. I get folks all the time sending me messages. Um, like I had somebody that they were in Maine and they were looking for something, not Maine, Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts, and they were looking for perennials um, to put out. Go to your local garden center, especially if you are not local, then it's hard for me to talk about what does best in Boston, Massachusetts, or Southern California, or the deep South Texas. I can give you ideas on structure and different colors and different types of plants maybe, but go to your local garden center because they're the experts in your region. I have never gardened in Southern California before, and if I were to tell you something, then I could probably give you some really bad information. So go visit them, they will help you. If you are local or you are gonna come visit us, we absolutely will help you when you get here. So you can bring pictures, you can bring your ideas, bring your questions. That is what we specialize here at Creekside Nursery is meeting you where you are so that you can be successful um, in your garden, whether you are a very beginning gardener or you have been gardening your entire life. We wanna meet you where you are so that you get the garden of your dreams. As always, we hope that you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Thank you for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.